Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Over Easy. My name is Manny. In case you're new here, or welcome back. I hope you are doing so fantastic, and I hope you had a good week. And uh, let's get into a rosebud thorn check-in right now. All right. There are a lot of things that happened this week, and I'm super excited about them. My rose is that, guys, I got a bike this week. So for my birthday this year, literally all that I wanted, the only thing I could have ever asked for was a bike. I just think that now that I'm living on my own, the neighborhood that I live in really inspired me because everyone loves going outside and just being outside and like exercising and stuff. So I really feel that, especially just like living close to the water, living close to trails. And uh, it's been it's been really fun being here. And I love walking and stuff like that when the weather is nice. But I was like, you know what? I think my next step is to get a bike. So how this happened was because up until this week, I really didn't put in effort into looking for a bike. I was like, oh, after my birthday, I'll spend some time. It was more so because I was still working on my application and I just haven't had the time and I was like oh I kind of want to go look into it and like figure out what I want but this week I was walking into the I was, where was I walking to I was walking to a cafe to study I think and I, I decided to walk because I was like oh it's such a nice day and obviously the good weather is here and more prevalent now so I want to take advantage of it and I was on a walk no I wasn't walking to study I was just on my hot girl walk for the day and I usually take this one route, this new route that I've been doing. I've been doing it for the last few weeks and it's been really, really fun. It's like six kilometers, takes me about like an hour, just over an hour. And the, today, that day that I was walking, I was like, huh, like I always go down this one particular street that passes by the same shops and the shops aren't that interesting. So I was like, I want to go to the next street because the next street has a lot of interesting shops. There's like this Britain themed shop where you can buy Britain snacks and stuff like that. British snacks, sorry. There's a candy store with all this like different types of unique candy and there's a bike shop. So I walked down the next street instead of the one that I usually go on just to change it up. And I passed by the bike shop and there was a bike on display outside for sale. And it was absolutely perfect. Seriously, like the bike of my dreams. The only requirements that I wanted for a bike, because I'm not really going for like professional level. I'm not a cyclist by any means. I'm just biking leisurely. The only requirements that I have were that it had a basket and that it was cute. That was literally it. That was all I was looking for. And my size, obviously. And when I saw the bike outside the bike shop when I was walking, I was literally like, it is perfect. It has a little basket at the front, even with a little water bottle holder. The basket has a little water bottle holder. What the heck? And it is the perfectest shade of brown. It's like this light brown color that matches my super puff, like matches my favorite kind of brown, which is like the light brown kind of like chocolate, light chocolate mousse. I don't even know how to describe it. So I was like, what the heck? I ended up going to the store. They got me to try out the bike. I took it around for a spin. It was just so much fun. And then I was like, kind of like, oh, this is super impulsive. So I put down a deposit only on the first day because I was like, oh, I can still think about it and stuff like that. But then the next day I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to get a bike anyway. Life is too short to just be so wishy-washy about things so I decided to go for it went back the next day got my helmet got my lock and I got my bike and since then I've been biking I haven't biked every day because it actually I didn't have much time this week but I did go on a few bike rides and it was just so much fun one thing I love in particular is the perspective that you get when you're walk uh, when you're riding a bike because I think when you're driving a car everything just seems so small because you pass by so fast but then when you're walking it 
things are a little bit too slow, I think. So biking is like that perfect medium where you still feel like you're on the ground, but things just pass by a little bit faster. So you can get those surrounding details, but also get to explore more because you can travel a little faster. So yeah, I remember the first day I got my bike, I went on an hour long bike. I think I biked like 20 kilometers that day because I was just so obsessed and it made me so happy. And uh, yeah, that's my rose of the week is just I have a bike now and I'm so excited to continue using it this spring and summer and just have so much fun okay my bud I am looking forward to as of the day that I'm recording this tomorrow is my birthday and I'm not really looking forward to like the day in general I'm looking forward to spending time with my friends tonight and also spending time with my family tomorrow tonight I got I have a, I have a birthday party guys it's my first year having a birthday party in so long it's just a small little get-together we're gonna go bouldering because that's just been one of my favorite things. And then we're going to get sushi after with a couple of friends that are still with me in Vancouver. One thing, I'll talk about this after, but this week's episode is a March reflection and April goals. But today I really spent a lot of time journaling and thinking about where my life is at. And one thing that I am so grateful for is just that I have a group of supportive friends here in Vancouver, and it just makes me so happy. Ah. <sighs> Sometimes I regret or just feel like sad that I didn't make as many friends as I could have in college, like super close friends at least. I made a lot of acquaintance friends, but I am so grateful that I still have so many friends from high school that I connect so deeply with and I'm still so close with and we spend so much time together. That just makes me really, really grateful. But I'll talk about more about that after when I share my March reflection and stuff. Okay, my thorn is, um, okay, my thorn is a continuation of last week. My phone screen time is still so high. It's gotten worse this week, which is not good. Um, as I was studying for the GRE and my phone was really low screen time because, you know, I had actually like things to focus on and study. So I wasn't on my phone much, but now that I'm just working on my application, I just feel not as motivated. So I'll go on my phone a little bit more. I'll just watch so much TikTok. Like it's not good. It's not good. So I need to think of ways that I can bring it back down. Maybe it's that I get outside more now that the weather's getting nicer because that will literally force me to put my phone away. But I have no idea. But yeah, that's my thorn. My screen time has not been good this week. Last night I watched TikTok for so long because, okay, I got kind of sucked down a rabbit hole because I started watching or like all these TikToks about politics and Congress started coming up on my For You page. I'm not going to talk much about it, but I just couldn't stop watching because I was literally in disbelief with how crazy Congress and politics is right now. Like that's literally all I can say about it is that it's crazy and I'm in disbelief all the time. Yeah, so that's my check-in for the week. Hope you had a good one as well. First thing I wanted to do in this episode is actually share the books that I've been reading and recently finished because I've been in a little bit of a reading era and I currently am reading a book that I think is so, so good. So last week, I think I was reading a book called Last to Vanish. It was a mystery fiction book and it was like all right. Um, The mystery was not as coherent as I would have liked it to be and to be honest I don't even remember the ending at this point but I just remember really not being satisfied with it like I felt like they dragged out the middle for so long and then the ending was just like such an anticlimactic ending so I didn't really love that book it was all right but um yeah that was a book I finished after that book last to fan it fin- th- oh my god I can't last to vanish I read Paper Towns by John Green. I love Paper Towns. I read it when I was a teenager and reading it again just sparks so much nostalgia, but also like on one hand when I was reading Paper Towns and also this goes the same with The Fall in Our Stars by John Green, I feel a lot of nostalgia because I have read this book before and I remember how much I loved it when I was a teen. But then now that I'm reading it as an adult, I also have this new perspective because, you know, I've grown up a little bit more. I have a different understanding of life and the way that we are. So Paper Towns was a really good book. I loved Paper Towns. It was so good. I think there's a movie. So if there is, I'm going to watch it because I really want to. I might also watch the Fault in Our Stars movie. I've been really enjoying doing that on the weekends is reading books and then watching the movie. But sometimes it does make me quite upset when the movie is not as good as the book, but we'll see. 
So that was the second book that I finished. I read it in like five days. It was so fast. And then currently I am reading this new book that I found at the library and it's called Single on Purpose by John Kim. So I really found this like by chance and honestly I'm gonna say by fate because I think the universe just dragged me to this cover it was on the shelf in the self-help section and I just just got it just because and as I flipped through it at the library I noticed that at the end of some chapters there were reflection questions that you could journal about and I love doing books like that because I love journaling and I love reading and that is one thing I do every single morning and recently I just feel like I haven't had much to journal about to be honest so I wanted a few like a little more variety in my journal prompts and I have been loving this book not just because of the prompts but because of what is actually written in here I'm going to kind of flip through what I've read so far and share the little nuggets that I've been really enjoying so I remember in the introduction (sighs) a big part of the introduction I know the title is kind of polarizing like single on purpose like that sounds freaking crazy also like I'm going through a breakup right now and I think this book has made me realize like I really need to spend some time just reconnecting with myself every time I'm in a relationship I kind of lose a bit of myself naturally because you're spending more time with this other person and you're kind of morphing into them slightly I remember a lot of my friends would comment that my boyfriend and I were like the same person because we acted so similarly near the end of our relationship but reading this book again I realized like okay, I'm, I'm not going to jump back into dating so quickly. I really don't want to. And I'm really going to spend this time, like this time that I have reconnecting with myself, what I want, who I am, and just my relationship with myself. Because I do think part of the relation, part of the reason why my previous relationship ended was because my relationship with myself was not perfect. And granted, it will never be perfect, but it could be better is what I want to say. So yeah um hmm. let's see let's see I did I did hold on 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 I saw this big nugget the other day and now I lost it um here here's one that's just a random paragraph that I found When you're in a relationship, you're less motivated to examine the black box of what happened in your previous relationships. You're in something new now. You've ran away from the crash. You've moved on. That door has closed. So the chances of you fully processing and taking ownership of your part in the exploration of learning and growing and becoming a better version of yourself are exponentially low, especially if you've jumped into a new relationship shortly after the old one, which most of us do. That is why the growth soil is so rich during the times between relationships. You have a limited amount of time to work on yourself and your life before you meet someone else. It doesn't mean you can't grow when you're in a relationship, but let's face it. When you're in a relationship, you're building something with someone else. You're a part of something else. So it's imperative to take advantage of the time you're unattached. Instead of searching for someone to be with, you must explore you. Your patterns, your definitions, how you love and why, your dreams, the dent you want to make in this world. You must explore your relationship with self. You must be with yourself first. (sighs) So generally the gist of this book is that is that while you're single, you need to kind of focus on yourself and not even while you're single like this book can be read by people who are in relationships as well I just think it is so important to build a strong relationship with yourself before you focus on going into relationships with other people and now that I'm given that perfect time especially now that my life is changing so much right now um I just think this is the perfect time to do that. And this leads me perfectly into my segue, which was I wanted to give you another breakup update. I think I'll do this for the next couple weeks until forever. I don't know. (laughs) But I just this week, my biggest realization about my breakup was that there is still so much that I have left to do in life. And in some ways, relationships can be holding you back. And Of course, there are relationships where people grow together and achieve their greatest dreams together and stuff like that. But in my case, my relationship was not one where that would have happened because now that I'm I think I talked about this in my breakup episode. Now that I'm out of my relationship and I just 
I feel like I have a bigger perspective. Like I'm not so tunnel vision anymore. I realize there are so many opportunities out there that literally I can achieve at any moment. But I think that staying in a relationship where we were ready to settle down would just not have made me, I think I would have had a lot of guilt and resentment in the long run because I would have felt like, what if, what if, what if. But now that I'm out of my relationship for a couple of weeks, I think it's been three weeks now, no, two weeks, I really do feel a lot better. Like the biggest thing, it's not even that I am sad, like I'm definitely still sad about what happened, but it's more so that my perspective has shifted towards being excited about the future. And granted, I don't want to focus too much on the future either. Like ideally, I live in the present, which I really think I have been, but It's just been really empowering to know that literally anything I want to achieve, like there are so many things I can achieve. I don't even know that they exist yet, but then also that nothing is holding me back now. So that has been my kind of mindset with that. And last thing we're going to do in this little intro, I've been talking forever, is our affirmation of the day, of course. Today, my affirmation was gratitude neutralizes fear. And when I got that while I was journaling, I did a little gratitude log. So I'm going to share with you what I wrote that I am grateful for today. Gratitude logs are such an easy way to start journaling. Like if you're intimidated by journaling, definitely just start with writing a a gratitude log every single day, like three things that you're grateful for. Okay, so I said the first thing that I'm grateful for is the good weather. Finally, I really do feel like it's not that I have seasonal affective, dis, uh, seasonal affective, seasonal affectiveness depression, seasonal affective disorder. I can't remember what it is. It's sad for short. I don't think I'm. I don't get like that depressed when it's cloudy outside but I definitely do become a lot happier when the weather is great um it just it motivates me a lot more and also just makes me feel like the day is is endless whereas in the winter when it started getting dark at 3 p.m I, it'd be like 12 o'clock and I'd be like well it's gonna get dark soon already so might as well just give up for the day but now that days are longer and it's also being like becoming so much nicer outside I just feel like there's so much more that I can do every single day and I feel more inclined to get things done every single day. So I'm very grateful for that. Also, because now I can go biking more. Number two is having a supportive group of friends and family. After my breakup, I have realized for sure that I am so grateful for having a group of friends in Vancouver that are able to support me. Like the fact that the day after my breakup, my friends just came with me and spent the day with me was really, really important and just really made my day because I realized like not everyone gets that. Like a lot of people have to face things alone. So that made me really grateful that I still have people here and that they genuinely care about me and that we have common interests and we do things together. That's made me really grateful. Okay, last thing that I wrote that I'm grateful for is my own personal strength and resilience. I think I... I'm really proud of just not even just about my breakup, but with all the change that's happened in my life this month in general, just being able to be resilient towards that and like adapt to that because I have really gone through a lot this month and that is really crazy to me just thinking about it. But it also makes me really grateful that I have this trait because it makes my life better, obviously, and also shows me that, you know, like, I can actually do a lot of things that I don't think I'm capable of. Like, I am capable. So that's my gratitude log of the day. Now let's get into your guys' affirmation. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to pull one. I wonder when I'm going to, like, start repeating the cards. Like, honestly, I don't even think I'd remember that it's a repeated one because they are all, there's so many. Oh, my gosh. When in doubt, turn to gratitude. How is your affirmation the same as mine, basically, about gratitude? (gasps) Holy moly. Okay, that is literally a sign from the universe that you need to go and write down three things that you were grateful for right now. You can think about it in your head, but honestly, I think writing them down onto paper just makes it so much more special and concrete and tangible. 
And that is so important is like being able to see what you are grateful for, because in your mind, you could be like, oh, I'm grateful for fresh water. I'm grateful for having a space to live in. I'm great. But it just doesn't hit as hard. I think when you write it down and really reflect about what you're grateful about, it is so it is so much more impactful. That is crazy. My affirmation cards, I think, are are literally not like cursed in a good way, like blessed by a spirit because there are so many instances where that has happened, where I'm going through something really tough and my affirmation card that I pull out literally matches what I need to hear in that exact moment. So that was really, really crazy. I don't know how that happened. Anyways, this week's episode is going to be a March review and an April goals, like look forward to April month. What? I don't know what I said. I've really been enjoying this like doing this every single month actually is just taking the time to reflect about what had happened in the last month and what you want to look forward to. And you don't have to do it on a monthly basis. I find it easy for me just to remember. And it's also just natural because it's like, oh, it's a new month. Okay, time to think about what happened last month. But you could do this bi-weekly if you need to. You could do this weekly if you need to. Or just like quarterly, six months. I don't even know. But I do think it is really important now that I have started doing this to do this because I have realized how much growth you really go through and you never really notice it until you take the time to purposely sit down and think about it. So I have been, I did this this morning, so I will share what I've reflected about how my March went and what I'm looking forward to in April. All right, so March was a bit of a different month for me. I think I've only alluded to this, but it was the month that I decided to try and go back to school for my master's. That is what I'm working towards right now. I am applying only to one program right now. We'll see the results about that and then I'll kind of alter my path depending on how that goes. So I haven't really thought much past that. Um, But that was what I was doing for the majority of March. So I had seen that the application that I wanted to submit was due on April 11th and I realized that I needed to take the GRE for my application so I counted backwards and I was like okay to make sure that I get my scores on time what is the last possible day that I can write the GRE and it was the 20th of March so from March 1st to March 19th I literally put my head down studied as much as I could and took my GRE on the 20th so obviously that was a big shift because Previously, from September until February, I've been working two jobs, working very, very full time and just always working. And that was a different lifestyle. Um, One thing that I'm going to say that I really, really enjoyed about this month was that I actually like had a goal that I was working towards. And maybe this is kind of the detriments of being in school for your whole life. But when I came out to work full time, it didn't really feel like I had a goal to work towards either it was like my goal was too long term like obviously like oh get a fulfilling career that is so vague and broad I don't know how I'm going to achieve that in the span of six months or a year but I really enjoyed having a goal that I could work towards which was studying for the GRE and doing the best that I could that was one thing I really really liked about March was like my days felt like there was purpose again because when I was working previously full time like 8 30 to 7 30 there were days where I would get super discouraged and I'm like why am I even doing this and I can't think of a good reason okay I need to pay my rent but surely there are other ways that are a little bit more like healthier and will help me feel more fulfilled than working 11 hours a day, four days a week, right? Like, I don't really want to do that. So that was something I really enjoyed about March was just feeling like I had a goal in my life again. And maybe this is just toxic productivity talking, but that was something I really, really enjoyed. Also, this month at work was just a lot chiller. I think I work in the like transportation logistics and supply chain. That was one category I found that kind of fit my job well Um, and obviously with the state of the economy and the fact that we are in a recession people aren't buying much so our industry is getting a lot more chill in March particularly it was so so chill and that really really afforded me some time off from work because then I could figure out what else I wanted to do and just do other things I really enjoyed that. Even now, we are picking back up again. It is April and we are picking up already. This last week was already quite busy. But 
I don't know. I feel like this month in particular, I felt really, really fulfilled by work because I just feel like I've learned so much and there's still so much to learn. Like, okay, let me tell you about something I learned this week at work. It was so random. So usually what happens is that shipments will come into our warehouse and I have to coordinate with the customers to figure out, oh, who are you getting to pick this up? Usually the customers always choose, oh, we're going to get UPS to pick this up. Oh, we're going to get FedEx to pick this up or like whatever other companies there are. But this week in particular, the customers, one customer asked me, oh, can you arrange delivery for me instead? And this little simple thing actually has taught me so much in this week alone. I was mostly dealing with it yesterday. It was very, very like stressful at times, but also I feel like I learned so much, even in this, just this one task alone was like, I learned how to talk properly to trucking companies, talking to customers, like being clear with customers, helping them through the process because they weren't as familiar either. And then also me, I was doing this for the first time. So I was asking lots of questions and figuring out what they were trying to do, like what I needed, what information I needed to give them. And I just feel like I learned so much just in that alone. And just in general, that's how I've been feeling about work was I've learned a lot this month and I am really happy about that. That is why I feel like it is so uh, beneficial to do, to work in your young 20s because I feel like this is when we are the most mentally capable, physical, physically capable, and just in tune with ourselves. And being able to invest this time into learning hard skills and soft skills is just so valuable, I think. So even if I never use these these hard skills that I've learned in this job ever again, at least I've learned, like this week, I've learned how to talk to customers, like what ways I can talk to customers to sell them things, like that is so important helping them through a process, being like the guide person. I don't know. I just feel like I've been learning so much this week and I've been really happy with that. So yeah, work and studying. That was kind of my main thing of March. I took the GRE after on the 20th and I did really, really well. I I just got my official score. So actually I can say So the GRE, in case you don't know, it's basically like the SAT, but just for grad school. So it is, there's one verbal score, one math score, and one writing score. I think that literally mirrors the SAT from when I wrote it. I don't know if it's changed. So it is both of the verbal and the math. They are ranked out of 170 points. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it's like one question is one point or how that works, but it's out of 170. For my math score, I got 165. And my verbal score was 157. And that was honestly, first of all, it was higher than any practice tests I've ever done when I was studying for the GRE. I only had time to like take two or three, but even then I was like, what the heck? So that made me really happy. And then second was just the fact that I studied for this exam in 19 days when a lot of people study for it for months on end. So to be able to get scores like that after 19 days made me really proud of myself. It's not the best that I could have done. I'm sure I could have done better had I had a few more days of studying, but given my circumstances and what I went through this month, I was really, really proud of myself. Then I didn't even say my essay score. It's the essays are marked out of six and I got a 5.5 and that 5.5 was in the 97th percentile. When I saw that, I literally, my jaw dropped and I was just shook because I was like, me, little old me, got a score like that. I had never been good at standardized testing when I took the SAT. I didn't do that well both times. Um, But this month, I just really, really put my head down to study. One thing is I studied so many vocabulary words. I think that's what really differed between the GRE and the SAT when I took it. And I just practice practice and practice and that was it and I I am really proud of my scores even if I don't get into the current application that I'm working on I know that score will get me into so many other places in the future if I choose to apply so I was really really proud of myself okay then after I took my GRE I 
since then have been working on my application and I have 10 more days and I am still working on it. So a little bit last minute, but that's okay. All right. So, um, then what happened in March was obviously I broke up with my boyfriend of almost three years and that was definitely very shocking to say the least. Actually, not shocking. I would say like changing, like it changed a lot of my life, which naturally that does. It wasn't shocking because there was always a poss like I always saw a possibility of it coming. And so it didn't really surprise me. Also, given the way the week led up, like the week leading up to it happening was, I was like, okay, I kind of did see this as an option of how the future would play out. So now I am feeling a lot better about it because I have just so many other things to look forward to, as I've said. But also this breakup has really afforded me more time to reconnect with my friends and my family. I think the two weekends or just like the last few weeks after I took my GRE and also now that I am single, I've spent so much time with my friends that people like that I would only see like once every couple months, which I realized like, I really should try to spend more time with my friends because honestly, it is so like, it is so special that we get these people in our lives and we should be more grateful for it, I think. So I went snowboarding. Oh wait, I want to talk about that after, but I went snowboarding. I got donuts with my friend, which was like such a small thing, but it was so meaningful to me. I'm spending time with my friends tonight. So I'm just very happy with how I have kind of taken this bad event and kind of rolled it into something that could be positive change in my life. And that makes me really happy. Okay, then I want to talk about, yes, my last Cyprus day was last Sunday. I went up to Cyprus, which is a mountain here in Metro Vancouver for the last day of snowboarding. It wasn't like the last day of the season, but this was just my last day. I didn't have any other time or like any desire to go any more times because I already went up that was my fifth time going up this season which is honestly a lot for me usually I only go up like twice or like three or once once twice or three times honestly never gone five times in my life in the same season so it was the absolute like the most perfectest weather day so nice we went up in the afternoon only which was when the day was starting to clear up it was powdery there weren't that many people which I was very surprised about considering it was Sunday night I see that I see that makes sense but I was just so pleased with it also I've improved so much this season so I feel like the last time I went snowboarding I really like took everything that I had practiced this season and just put it all into like put it all into go and and had a really good time snowboarding. So that was a really, really good day. So that's kind of the gist of my March. That's what happened. I want to go over my March goals that I set on March 1st, kind of just talk about them and re reflect on them because I think that's super important. Okay, I'm also going to say my March goals, I set them not knowing that the breakup was going to happen, obviously, but now, like a lot of these goals actually fit really nicely with the fact that we, I, I'm single now. So my first goal, I don't know why I, for, I did this because my application is not even due in March, but the first goal was submit an application I'm super proud of and that I put my best effort into. I'm still working on this goal. I'm still writing my essays and getting my application ready. All I can do is just put my best effort and then it's out of my hands. So that's all I'm going to tell myself. Number two, don't ruminate and dwell too much on the past and the memories. I put this goal down because I knew that I was quitting my job as a math tutor. And I, I thought that I would be way more sad about it than I actually was. So I put this goal down because I was like, oh, I don't want to think too much about all the good memories that I had in this job and just like how fun it was. But I actually realized that this job was honestly holding me back like majorly. And that quitting this job was probably one of the best things I could have done for myself. I actually wrote this in my reflection this morning. So let me share with you what I wrote. Because I, I made this realization a couple weeks ago, but it wasn't until today when I was really reflecting about it that I realized like this was such a big 
positive change in my life this month. So let's see. Um, While quitting my job sucked in the moment, it was one of the best things I could have done for myself. My sleep, diet, exercise, my mental have been so much better. It was a comfortable job, but always holding me back in so many ways. So what I mean by that is quitting my job helped my physical health so much more. My sleep because what I would end up doing was I had to wake up at five in the morning to be able to go to the gym. And okay, I could have argued like, okay, let's not go to the gym then. But I knew that exercise was something that was really important to me and made me feel better. So I woke up at five to be able to go to the gym every single day. Um, And that was not good. Like me waking up at five in the morning, even though I was technically like getting enough hours of sleep by sleeping at nine and waking up at five, some nights like I wouldn't be able to fall asleep right away or it was just like not a good night of sleep and I would just feel so tired all the time. This past month, I've been sleeping like eight and a half hours per night, which is actually what I think my body needs and I've been feeling so much better and just so much more. I look so much healthier and I feel so much healthier and I actually wake up from sleep like feeling refreshed and good. My diet as well has been so much better. One thing that happened uh, a lot when I was working until 7.30 every night because I would work until 7.30 and then I need to go to sleep by 9 o'clock to be able to wake up at 5, which is not a lot of time because I would drive home. I wouldn't get home until 8. Then I would have to cook dinner, which wouldn't be until 8.30. And then I would basically just be eating dinner and then going to bed right away. So what would happen before was my stomach would literally start hurting at the end of my shift. And it was just not a pleasant feeling because when I got home, my stomach was still hurting and I was eating dinner like while my stomach hurt and then going to bed with an upset stomach. It was just not good for my digestion or my health. This month, now that I am not working as late, I have been able to cook dinner much earlier, like five or six after my workout classes. And it's just been so much better for my health. Also, like I'm able to cook better meals like before when I was working so late every night, I would cook what what is fastest and that is not, a, not always the healthiest. But now that I have a bit more time, I'm able to actually prepare fresh food and eat balanced meals, the things that I actually like to eat and not just like the same thing every single night. My exercise as well, I was feeling so fed up because I was going to the gym at 6 30 in the morning to be able to fit it into my schedule but I only really had time to go for like 20 minutes every single day so like after the Stairmaster I literally have like 10 minutes to do strength training and that's barely anything which really it wasn't even that my body felt upset it was like my mental Phillips felt upset because I knew that I wasn't getting as much as I could get done and also exercise makes me feel really good so not being able to do that was really really upsetting me But now this month I've been doing fitness classes again. I've been going on hot girl walks. Now I'm biking. I just feel so much better and I'm able to actually exercise every day. And it's not even that I force myself to. It's that I want to do all this exercise. It just makes me feel so good. And I'm really, really happy with that. Lastly, my mental, um, I just feel less exhausted and just I remember even though that I loved my math tutoring job, there were days where my mental was just so tired that I really didn't like it and I didn't want to have that negative connotation with the job because I really did like the job. It was just that I was so exhausted all the time that made me dislike it, but my mental has been so much better (sighs) this month. Like I feel like I'm actually, it's not just like the days are passing by, but I'm actually living in them, which is really, really important. So That was definitely a hard decision in the moment, but something that I am so happy that I did. Uh, So I'm really glad that I challenged myself and left something that was so comfortable for me and something that I had been doing for so long to switch it up. Number three, 900 TikTok followers. I did not hit this. I think I'm at like 835 right now, which is totally fine. I really don't care, but that's my third goal. Number four, put myself out there for new opportunities and experiences. I don't know if I've done this a lot in March, but I'm definitely planning towards it already in April. Like I've already made concrete plans. I am looking to just 
reinvest back into other hobbies that I have. Next week, I signed up for a pottery class again that I did. I did pottery like last summer and I was so happy with it that I signed up again for another class next week. And my friend and I are going to take a jewelry making class in May, maybe, which is like where you get to make your own sterling silver rings, which is so cool. And I'm not even like that interested. Like I like wearing jewelry. I'm not that interested in like the concept and the details but my friend is really interested in that so I asked her if she wanted to do it and we're gonna do it and it's in May and I'm so excited because that is I feel like that's such a cool experience to make your own rings what the heck I don't know I just thought that was so cool I want to go back into I want to do more bouldering for sure that's why I'm going tonight with my friends I want to just do more like different types of exercise like now that I have a bike I'm definitely gonna be biking more of course but also like tennis badminton I don't even know like everything and anything I feel like I just want to try everything and anything so number four I didn't really reach that in March but that is one of my goals for April and I'm definitely working towards that already number five is enjoy the change that was my last goal for March (laughs) um I don't know if I would say I enjoyed the change in the moment when it was happening like when I was getting broken up with that definitely wasn't enjoyable but being retroactive about it and looking back at it I definitely would say like all the change has led me to a really good place in my life and I'm very happy with that so yeah those are my March goals let's go into my April goals my April goals I also have five number one Maintain consistency with YouTube and over easy. Oh yeah, that wasn't even something I talked about earlier. I started posting on YouTube again. I was, I've been vlogging every single weekend and just taking the pressure off myself, just doing what I want, recording my life and just having fun with it. And it's just been so nice. Uh, even just recording my breakup and talking about it and being honest through that, I feel like has made me feel a lot better about it so I want to continue with that obviously I've been doing really well in March uploading every week for both platforms I want to keep going because I feel like it's just so much fun number two develop a healthy and strong relationship with myself while I do have a very positive self-image right now I think I was just journaling about this this morning I think my self-image and my self-esteem is probably the best it's ever been in my life I know there are other things there are still some things that I need to work towards improving and again like I said it's not going to be perfect ever but I do know that there are certain things that I do. There are certain behaviors that I have that I would still like to work on and improve and kind of heal from. Uh, There are a couple behaviors that I have from like childhood traumas that I still haven't gotten over and I still am trying to work on. So that's kind of that. And then also talking about the book that I'm reading, Single on Purpose, is just really investing the time in figuring out who I am, who I want to be, like what kind of person would fit with me ideally when I'm ready to date again and that is that number three as I just said indulge in different hobbies and interests just for fun so that means like not trying to be the best at it not trying to you know go competitive or whatever but just enjoying for the sake of the journey and not just the destination is like enjoying because of the process you know what I mean like I love pottery because I love the process of it, not just the bowl that you make. Obviously, that bowl is super cool, but I really do enjoy the process. Like when your bowl breaks and then you have to redo it again, it's like it's frustrating, but it's also so rewarding to go through that process and have that. Number four is go outside and enjoy the sun. I want to be super tan already. Like today I can see it's blue skies. I thought it was going to rain today, but apparently not. So I might go on a bike ride after I eat some lunch today. That'll be super fun. And then number five is be unapologetically myself, which is kind of easier said than done because I'm still trying to figure out what being myself means. But I do know that I'm kind of tired of having to put on an act or trying to put my best foot forward. I just need to put my foot forward, you know what I mean? And just do what makes sense for me and do what's best for me and what I want to do. So those are my April goals. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you take some time to reflect on what has happened this month or maybe the last few weeks or the last week or just today in general if you want because I find it has been so rewarding to be able to look back on how much I have changed and how much I have grown in the last month like I think that is 
the biggest thing for sure. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you for my next episode of Over Easy. Okay, bye. And I was like, yo.